I loved this movie as a kid, so I watched it recently to see if it's as good as I remember. And no, no it isn't. Feel free to disagree. This is 1989's Best of the Best. I'm Jay Harang, and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. We start by meeting blue-collar sex symbol Alex Grady, played by a priest stalked by my doctor, Eric Roberts. He's got long hair and a leather jacket. Yeah! He has a son called Walter, and today Alex is teaching Walter how to ride a bike. I'm riding alone! I'm riding alone! Fuck off! You piece of shit! Cut to this kid's karate class in Fresno, where these two kids start fighting. Their karate teacher is Tommy Lee, and he breaks the fight up, because this karate teacher doesn't believe in violence. And don't bother putting in the comments, it's Taekwondo, actually. I don't care. Tommy receives a letter, and it's an invitation to try out for the US national karate team. Well. If selected, he'll attend a three-month training camp before flying to Korea to fight their national team. Apparently, they take it pretty seriously over there. Korea! Alex has received this letter too. His mum, who he and Walter live with, is like, Alex, you can't do that. You're old, you've got a dodgy shoulder, and what about your son? What about my son? Wow, that's nice. So that's decision made. And here we are at the tryouts where we find out who's been selected. Obviously Alex and Tommy have been chosen, or the last 10 minutes of the film would have been a complete waste of time. Yes, of course. Then there's Travis, an aggressive, opinionated cowboy from Miami. Travis doesn't care about other people's feelings, and he'll do anything to win. Virgil is a Buddhist from Providence. He's the one who's not very good at karate. What? Yeah, I can't work that out either. The final pick is Sonny, and he's Italian. I'm Italian. Yeah, apparently that's his whole personality. The coach of the team is James Earl Jones. I'm not going to bother with his name in the film because he's just James Earl Jones. He tells the team that he won't be putting up with any messing about. The best part of this speech is how he says the word team. 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 He's like, we're starting tomorrow, so tonight you can go out to a local bar and have fun. You might even get laid. <laughs> this old guy who seems to be in charge tells James Earl Jones that he's hired another trainer called Dr. Wade. James Earl Jones is like, I don't need another trainer. But the old guy's like, don't care, I've already hired Dr. Wade. On the way to their rooms to get ready for their big night out, Travis racially abuses Tommy. Ah. Oh, so sorry. The rest of the team think Travis is a real jerk. In Alex and Tommy's room... You have a kid. Walter's five now. Five going on 30, huh? Yeah, how'd you know? And Tommy's like, well, I'm his secret pen pal. I pose as a five-year-old. <laughs> no, not really. I work with kids. Oh. Sonny the Italian is rooming with the stats guy, and he plays him some opera, because he's Italian. I'm Italian. This means that Virgil has drawn the short straw and is sharing a room with Travis. Virgil is trying to meditate, but Travis wants to talk to him about inner and outer labia. Ew. Inner and outer labia? Yes. When they get to the bar, Alex and Tommy are talking. The stats guy is doing stats. Travis is looking for anyone to shag. And much to everyone's surprise, it looks like Virgil is going to get some. Even Sonny hasn't seen any action. But I'm Italian. Yeah, we know. It looks like Travis is in luck too, as this woman's clearly up for it. But oh no, she's there with her boyfriend, Bert. And we know he's bad news, because he's wearing a sleeveless denim jacket. Go away, Bert. Yeah, Bert, go away. They all start going for Travis, but Tommy comes over and he's like, hey, everyone, violence isn't the answer. Really? Hey, who the hell are you? Whoa. How impressive. Then there's this fight. James Earl Jones is there watching, and although he's normally really strict, he doesn't mind them doing this, because they've worked as a team. Team! The next day, we meet Dr. Wade, and oh, look, she's a woman. What? I'm going to ignore most of the stuff about Dr. Wade, because all she does is talk about nonsense. This includes Buddhism, Hinduism, yoga, and meditation. Yeah, you get the idea. Then we get a training montage before Dr. Wade talks shit to them. That night before bed, Alex is like, Tommy, do you have any brothers or sisters? And Tommy's like, no, and turns the light off. I wonder if that's going to be relevant later. The next day, they find out that if a fight ends up as a draw, the winner will be determined by how many blocks they can break. Dr. Wade's like, yeah, you need to break them with your mind. Then demonstrates... Yeah! And everyone's really impressed. At lunch, Travis is racially abusing Tommy again. But Tommy gets the last laugh. What do your boy say? Think he's yellow? 
Obviously. <laughs> Walked into that one. Yep. Later, they're shown videotapes of their opponents while James Earl Jones tells them all how dangerous they are, especially Tommy's opponent. Day Han, rated number one in the world. That night, Tommy remembers how when he was a kid, Day Han made him drop his ice cream. Excuse me? Oh yeah, he also killed his older brother in a fight just like this one. I see. So now this is all Tommy can think about. I'm struggling to see why Day Han being his opponent is such a shock to Tommy. He signed up to fight Korea and Day Han is ranked number one in the world. I know there was no internet in 1989, but you'd have thought that he'd have done some research and worked out that it was at least a possibility. Apparently not. Anyway, Statsman shows the tape of Day Han killing Tommy's older brother to James Earl Jones, who's like, make sure nobody else sees this. After another training montage, Alex gets a call from home. Walter has been hit by a car. Good. So Alex is going to need to go home immediately. James Earl Jones is like, that's fine, but if you leave, you're not coming back. What? He's like, sorry, we're leaving in three days, so the choice is yours. I'm out of here. When Alex gets home, he finds out that Walter is in a coma and he cries. But then he wakes up and Alex goes back to training camp. James Earl Jones is like, nope, sorry, you fucked it now. And he's like, please give me another chance. This is the only thing I am good at. But he's like, no, you made your choice. So Alex walks out. Then Tommy decides he's leaving too. Nothing to do with showing solidarity with his new best friend, Alex, just because he doesn't want to fight Day Han. Alex runs after him and tells him not to quit. Day Han killed my brother in a tournament just like this one. I'd probably ask why he got into karate or whatever this is after seeing his brother die doing it. But Alex is like, if you don't do it just right now, you never will. I'm not sure what that means, but it doesn't matter because Tommy just rides off on his motorbike in a leather jacket. Yeah. In the office, Dr. Wade has found the videotape of Day Han killing Tommy's brother. Why do they have this in the office? No idea, but they've got it and that's where they keep it. Dr. Wade can't believe that James Earl Jones would make Tommy fight Day Han, knowing that that had happened. I was the coach of that team, Miss Wade. Tommy's brother died because I failed. What? Okay, I've got far too many questions there, so I'll just crack on. The rest of the team go up to James Earl Jones and tell him they need Alex and Tommy back on the team. Even Travis. Maybe he's not such a jerk after all. Plane leaves tomorrow, 20 hundred hours. I wonder what's going to happen tomorrow. Oh, look, it's Alex. But what about Tommy? Well, luckily, he pulls over at a gas station and sees a kid drop his ice cream and then his older brother giving him his. So that's it. Decision made. So he turns up at the airport just as the plane's about to depart. Good job he did, I suppose, because there doesn't seem to be any sort of alternate lined up. What would they have done had Tommy not come back? Throw the stats guy in. That could backfire. Anyway, they arrive in Korea and it's straight to the fight. It's a point system, so one team can narrowly lose four fights and still win the competition if they win the last fight convincingly. Oh, look. James Earl Jones has arranged for Walter to come and watch Alex. That's nice, isn't it? Let's just hope Walter is luckier than young Tommy was with his ringside seat. <laughs> First up is Sonny. I'm Italian. He gets battered. Ah! Ah! He ah! Ah! But I'm Italian. So it's 11-7 to Korea. Virgil does even worse. Making it 20 to 9. Next up is Travis, and he does better, but can only manage a tie. <laughs> they don't show the score here, but I assume Korea are leading by 12 points. Now it's Alex's turn. We're taking home the gold, Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna kick your ass. Yeah. Alex gets the better of the first round, so now he's coming out for the second. I'm gonna take your head off. Yeah, we've already done one of those. We don't need another one. Oh, no. Alex has injured his bad shoulder. If he's unable to continue, the US team will be forced to forfeit. Oh, no. Pop it, Tommy. Shit, Tommy, pop it. <laughs> Fuck off, Walter. You little whore. Alex only has to survive a few seconds, which he does. He even adds points to his team. So it's 29-22 to Korea, and it's all down to Tommy versus Day Han. These actors are actually real-life brothers, by the way. Is that a fact? Yeah, it is, actually. Tommy gets off to a bad start, but he eventually turns things around. <laughs> the US are now just one point behind, so all Tommy needs is a knockout, and Day Han is fucked. It looks like Tommy is going to avenge his brother. Tommy, no! No! and he doesn't do it. So Tommy's cost his team the win. Don't ever forget that. So the Koreans are presented with their medals while Team USA are really sad. But what's this? Dehan approaches Tommy. To save a life in defeat is to earn 
Victory. Blah, 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 yeah. Then Daehan gives Tommy his medal. Then the rest of the Koreans hand their medals over too. So now everyone's friends, yeah. And that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And please consider joining my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you.